This is a quick video on how to make a six month market update. Um, the way that you would do that once you, we're going to start with the MLS information. So you log into the MLS, you can click on residential search, go to stats. I'm going to do one for Santa Clara County, combined single family condos and townhomes. SCC, if you're doing it for a particular area, you'd put that area in. If you're doing it for a city or zip, you could do that as well. Um, usually you need larger groups that have meaningful statistics. Time frame, we're going to go back past five years. <clears throat> the statistic first one we want to look at is number of closed sales, and we're going to group it by month. And once we're done, we're going to click Generate which will make a interesting I don't know chart but we're going to click on data because that's really what we want click on export to a CSV allow Microsoft Excel to open it it helps if Microsoft Excel is already open by the way when you start this process um, if you click on that little box in the corner and go to format auto fit column width it's going to show you what the numbers are and um, with the anyhow, it makes everything expand. And so what we're going to do is we're going to just delete this information. And then at the bottom, we're going. What we wanted to do is, if you're using Excel, there's a thing called Auto Sum. And if you click on that and hit Enter, and then uh, once we've done that, we're going to drag it all the way over. And so what this has now done is it's created um, it's added up the number of closed sales from 2009 2010 11 and whatever and we're going to go to insert and we're going to make this a recommended chart let's just see what what charts they recommend that one looks beautiful why not so we click on this and so what it shows is a little graph showing the number of closed sales. And what I usually do is if you click on that and move the chart into a new sheet, it looks a little bit nicer. So we have this little chart. And the title would be um, and I'm having difficulty with this. Closed sales, single family condos and town homes, Santa Clara County. Right? And we've got a little chart we could do fancier things if we wanted to. I'm probably going to remove that excess there and it shows us the different numbers. You could, by clicking on these different tabs, it shows you different looks. Um, that one looks kind of nice. That one looks a little different. Some of them have the numbers in. How about this one? It looks beautiful. And um, <clears throat> anyhow, we've made a chart. And I'm going to. Um, so why don't now that we've done this, let's just uh, let me look at. Let me pull this up and move this down. Let's look at the statistics. And just uh, the nice thing about Excel is it'll do calculations and stuff for you. Now, what I'm probably going to do is just um, make this get rid of all of this because it's just cluttering up our cluttering everything up. And by the way, if you want to be efficient, you can click on this, go to Find and Select, go to Replace, paste that in, leave nothing there, replace all, and it's replace them all. And then now when we click here and we format auto fit column width, it gives us a nice little tight grouping. So that gives us the total. Now, if we want to know, so you, we can just sort of look at this. Sales are down, obviously for uh, from this year to the year before to the year before to the year before this is the lowest number of sales that we've had in Santa Clara County for the first six months since 2009 
And if we wanted to know what the differences were, if we say this equals, that would be 2014 minus 2013. And we so we, we went down that much. And so if we wanted to know how much, uh, so that shows us that how much we've dropped each year. And if we wanted to know what percentage that is, this equals that divided by the previous year. So it's a 1% drop. But we've got a chart that shows closed sales of single family homes. We have an analysis. And you could write something that simply says, um, close sales for homes in the Santa Clara County for the first half of the of 2014 were the lowest since 2009. So we've uh, identified that home sales are down. Now if we want to identify what else could we be interested in, how about the median sales price? So we just go and change that, click on generate, and um, wait, always wait. Export as a CSV, open in Microsoft Excel, and then what I would just do now is because the median price varies, we're not going to, we could average it, I guess, uh, if we wanted to be fancy. I'm not sure that we want to, but let's just see. If we do this and we go there and we go to AutoSum and hit enter, so that's not going to work, right? So why don't we just, what we just want to know is where it was in June at the end. So we click on this. We go to insert. Let's look at their recommended charts. So why not? That one looks beautiful. We click on it. It gives us a chart. Um, I usually click on the chart and move the chart to its own sheet just because, I don't know, it's an analytical thing to do. And we might pick on a different title, and so we want a different. So we're going to just uh, do um, median price of single S I N G L E family condos and town homes in. Santa Clara County for first half of the year. Why not? And um, so now we made another chart. And although sales are down, obviously the median price is rising. And if we look at the statistics, we can, again, you can look at the numbers. And um, if we want to know what's the difference, what we can say this equals the current year minus the previous year. So that's the amount difference between 2014 and 2013. And if we take that equals that divided by the old total, uh, we can see that we have 11% increase from this year to last year. And just to be fun, we'll say well, how much is this year's minus what it was back in 2009. This equals that divided by that. And uh, that is a 60%. So that's an interesting statistic. Um, maybe we should do that on our our one for the closed sales. So it's one percent down, um, and this equals that minus that. We're back to closed sales, so it's 164. So this equals that divided by that. So 
um, when we're looking at closed sales, it's down 1% from last year, up 2% from 2009. Not a big difference. But when we're looking at median price, it's um, up 11% from last year and up 60% from 2009. So this would be something where people that had, let's say, tried to sell their home back in 2009 and weren't able to, they might be interested in that. Um, the other thing we might want to do just for, there's a lot of different things we could look at, but how about the um, days to sell median? All right, and we're going to click on this and... It gives us export as a CSV. Open it up. Here's that. Um, and what we might want to do is to delete this. And what we really want is the formula for average. And it was so for the first six, it was 55 days. And we don't need all those. Okay. So those are the days to sell average this year going all the way back to 2009. If we want to make a chart, we insert a, I'm losing it, recommended charts. Uh, why not let them go with that one? And there it is. We've been using this chart as a, Example, we click on that, we move the chart into a new sheet, okay, um, and then this would be days to sell average for single family condos and town homes for first half of the first half of the year and um, why not so now that we've got all this um, we actually have things that we could use for purposes of, uh, of putting together a little bit of a newsletter we've got days to sell average we could do months of unsold inventory if we want to look at other statistics Another one that's somewhat interesting is the sales price to list price ratio. And we're going to click on this. And uh, data open. We're going to get rid of that. Delete. And uh, if we want, we could uh, average it and drag it across and then insert a recommended chart. Click on that. Click on that. Um, move the chart to a new sheet. And uh, change the title. Um, I'm going to make all of these. I'll clean them up so that they uh, look pretty much similar. I'll make all of these available for you. But I just wanted to go through the process of making these graphs and charts so that you could do it for a particular area. One final thing I should cover is now that you've created graphs and charts like this, um, let's say you wanted to make an image of it. One of the 
issues with Microsoft Excel is that you can't just save the file as an image. So let's say this is a chart we wanted to make an image of that we could put on a postcard or a newsletter or something like that. So what you do if you there's a couple ways to do it. If we right click, you have to sort of get to the border and click on copy. And then if you go to uh, everybody that has um, everybody with a Macintosh or a PC should have a program called Paint. And if you open up Paint, so we've copied that and we paste it in. And what it, what it does is it pastes it into Paint, and then. Um, if we just we make it, we, we go up here to file and save as, and it allows us. So this one is days to sell, and we put it someplace where we can find it, and we click on save, and we've now got an image. Um, if you another way to do that, however, is to open up PowerPoint and make a slide and the slide could simply be um, let's say title and content and graphs and charts are one of the things um, although we could also just make a blank one and when we go to our excel spreadsheet and again we get the border and copy it and you go to excel and you hit and you paste it it goes into Microsoft Excel, I mean, excuse me, PowerPoint. So we've now created a PowerPoint slide. We could, you know, move it around to make it sort of fit if we wanted to. Um, you can uh, put it in the corner and make it fit. It's sort of, and now that it's in PowerPoint, you can go to File and the save as and in PowerPoint you can save it as a PNG uh, which is probably the best one and days to sell average and uh, put it someplace where you can find it and we're just going to do that one, but if you paste them all in, you could import them all. And there you have it. We've created charts and graphs, and we've made pictures of them, which we could now import. Um, that's, that's enough for now.